Good morning and welcome to Highway Online. I'm so glad you're with us this morning. If you're a regular, welcome back. If you're new to Highway Online, I want to welcome you and I want to encourage you to let us know who you are because we want to know you're here with us. We want to send you a little more formal welcome and you can do that very easily. You can just take your phone and text the word welcome to 416-267-1189 and then just follow the prompts so we can gather the information so we can send you a little more formal welcome in the mail and we want to again thank you for being our guest today i also want to encourage you if you're a regular or even if you're new as well we want you to take part in the chat because we want you to know and we want to know who's here with us today the people that are here in the service with you would love to say hi i'd love to say hi because i'm here in the chat as well and we want to know that you're here and say good morning and then we can have a conversation however you want to go about that but in order to be part of the chat you need to just subscribe to the channel and then just say hi to us in the chat and, and at least i will say hi back if no one else does but hopefully the rest of you will remember to chat among yourselves today and let everybody know that we're not just gathered that we're gathered that we're not just isolated this morning I do have a few announcements I want to share with you this morning. First of all, I want to remind you that Zoom Kids and Junior Highs are back up and running. They started Friday night, so they will be taking place here in the building uh, for, ki for students ages SK through grade 5, and then Junior High is grade 6 through 8. They take place here in the building at 7 p.m., so if you have students that age, make sure you have them here Friday nights. They'll love the programs. As well, our youth program for those in high school starts up again tomorrow night here in the building again at 7 p.m. So if you have a high school student or if you are a high school student, make sure you're here in the building if you live local tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for our youth program as it kicks off. As well, All Church Prayer is coming up next Sunday, September 24th at 6 p.m. here in the building once again. I encourage you, join us for all church prayer. Everyone is welcome from kids right through our older adults. That's a nicer way to put it. I am an older adult now, so I can put it that way. But next Sunday, 6 p.m., all church prayer here in the building. I also want to let you know this morning, and I say also a lot, but I want to let you know that our new young adult group is beginning next Monday, the 25th of September, here at Highway at 6.30 p.m. Young adults are those who have graduated high school. I got that wrong last week in the announcements. The, those of you who have graduated high school through to your early 30s, and there's a group now designed specifically for you, and it begins on September the 25th at 6.30. Plan to be here if you're a young adult. And finally this morning, our ladies will be having a day of worship and prayer or a morning of worship and prayer on Saturday, September the 30th, it's beginning at 1030. So ladies, plan to come here to the building and join together with the other ladies of the church as you worship together and pray together. I want to take this time to say thank you to all of you who have been faithful in your giving to the mission and ministries here at Highway. We thank you for that. We want to remind you there's four ways to give. You can e-transfer us. You can use the Tidely app. You can go to our website and click give. And finally, you can mail us a check. Please don't mail cash. But thank you for all of you who have been faithful to the mission and ministry here at Highway. I want to remind you that you can go to our website, highwaygospel.ca, to check out everything I've announced right here this morning, in case you forget. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for some weekly updates that come out as well, and that as well. It's a great time to open your YouVersion app and uh, follow along with, with Pastor Michael's message this morning. I almost said Pastor Dan, but Pastor Michael's message this morning. So it's a great time. Open the YouVersion app, go to events, look up Highway, and you can follow along with the notes Pastor Michael has provided you there. Before we go into our time of worship and the Word, let's just have a moment of prayer together. Father, we thank you this morning that we can gather together in this format for those who can't make it to the building, whether it be because of distance, because of health, because of whatever, Lord, we thank you that we have this medium that we can gather. 
So Lord, as we gather this morning, we pray for one another. For those watching, Lord, that need healing this morning, I pray you reach down your hand right now by your spirit and heal bodies today, heal minds today, heal spirits today, Lord God. Do a work. And Lord, we all pray that you speak to us this morning as we hear your word. Change our hearts. Draw us closer to you, Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. Now, as we worship you, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. And may we open our hearts to what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. And remember, highway is a place to belong. And you belong here. Hi, I'm so excited to tell you about our fall spiritual campaign called The Awe of God. We are going to study how a healthy fear of God can transform your life. So I'm inviting you to join us for the six-week, 42-day spiritual journey that begins on October the 15th. In a nutshell, let me remind you what a spiritual campaign is or tell you what it is. It's where we focus all of our teaching for adults at Highway to a specific topic in all the different ways that we do church. Let, let me let me kind of tell you, the, the cornerstone of this campaign is this 42-day devotional book called The Awe of God. It's written by John Bevere himself. And so in it, there's 42 readings like I just mentioned. And every day's reading ends with a point to ponder from the reading and a prayer point to take you into prayer. And you need this book to get the most out of this spiritual campaign. And I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to get one and to follow along with everybody else. We're making these books available for a slightly discounted cost of $20 suggested donation. So if you can afford that, that's great. If you can only afford part of that, that's great too. Just get yourself a book and make sure that you follow it. You can give that suggested donation through any ways of our giving options here at Highway and just mark your giving book. Along with this book, I suggest that you join a connect group. Those are the new names for what used to be small groups. And here in your connect group, you'll be able to watch a short video from John Bevere himself discussing the weekly topic that you've been reading as well. And you'll have time to discuss and learn and grow in it and then end your connect group time with a time of prayer for one another. And every Sunday during the campaign, we are going to use the Sunday teaching to kick off the topic for the week. And that's going to go along with your daily readings and your connect group meetings. More information about our campaign can be found on our website, highwaygospel.ca. So let me ask you, are you going to join us for this campaign? Will you make sure that you get your hands on, on one of the books? Join a connect group. Go ahead, test drive one. Even if you've never been in one, test drive one beginning October 15th and join us for the Sundays of the campaign. I am looking forward to this campaign and for you coming along with us. God bless you. surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still raging me to still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You made the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe all these bones to live, all these lungs to sing.
The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, Fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning, Highway family. It's so nice to be back with you here on our online platform. Today, we're going to be spending some time in Psalm 23, and we're going to go through it uh, and just understand it a little more and, and talk about the topic as God as our shepherd, which is why I titled this sermon, A Time with the Shepherd, and we're going to just spend some time understanding why it's important to be spending time with God and what it means for him to be our shepherd. But before I get into that in the verses today, I just wanted to make a few mentions. The word sheep is mentioned throughout the Old and New Testament almost 300 times and it's used for a variety of different things. It talks about the actual livestock itself. It talks about the innocent sacrifice uh, in, made in the Old Testament, but it also talks about us as the church being sheep for Christ as him as our shepherd and to be honest for a while I didn't like this concept of being a sheep if if you don't know sheep are stinky they are careless they're not that bright um, they make a lot of mistakes they're accident prone um, they make the same mistake over and over again until they're corrected and it wasn't until I got a little older did I realize I am very much like a sheep and I'm so thankful that we have a shepherd to take care of us. And I want to also make a mention that in the Bible throughout the Old, especially in the Old Testament, but through the New Testament, a shepherd in the Bible symbolizes leadership. It's not just this lowly position that uh, people who couldn't spend time in school got to do. It was a symbol of leadership as a shepherd leads their flock. Actually, it was so influential in leadership, other cultures during the Old Testament actually took the symbols of being a shepherd and used it in their culture. If we look at the Egyptians, as we know, their pharaohs were the most important figure in their cities and their countries. And when they died, they were put into sarcophagus. And on that sarcophagus, you see a mummy crossing their arms. In one hand, they're holding a flail or a whip and in the other one they're holding a stick and that stick represents a shepherd's staff so being a shepherd the leadership of a shepherd was a known fact it was prized if you were a leader you were called to be a, like a shepherd we even see this in the story of Moses in the book of Exodus that after his killing of the Egyptian guard who was abusing the one a Hebrew worker, he flees into the wilderness where he meets a man named Jethro and Jethro teaches him for 40 years how to be a shepherd because even though Moses was taught how to be an Egyptian ruler and leader, he needed to be taught how to be a shepherd for God's people. And that's where we're going to pick up today in Psalm 23 as we understand why it's important to have a shepherd and why it's important to see Christ as a shepherd. So Psalm 23, verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. 
being a shepherd was and is a compassionate and intimate job. He had to make sure that the sheep not only were taken care for and caring about their well-being, but he had to build a relationship with them so that they trusted him. There was comfort in him. So when he guided them, they didn't run off. They didn't make their own decisions. They trusted that the shepherd was going to lead them where they needed to be. The sheep had to find comfort in their shepherd. And I want to just go over some quick misconceptions because some people believe shepherds are like babysitters for sheep, that they're lazy, they don't do anything, they just sit on a hillside and watch sheep and, you know, count sheep once in a while to make sure they have all their sheep. But this isn't really true. They didn't just sit in a field all day. What would happen is food was scarce. So they would have to guide their sheep from field to field through the wilderness, sometimes going through a desert or dry land. And it was kind of a dangerous job, and we're going to get into that in one moment. But let's read Psalm chapter 23, verse 4, where it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Like I said, being a shepherd was a dangerous job the darkest valley what they're talking about is the wilderness and as we know as we read throughout the bible the wilderness was a dangerous and ravenous place that so many things could go wrong and the shepherd had to traverse this wilderness with their sheep seeking food going from pasture to pasture sometimes for any number of days without food or water they had to find water which was a big issue sometimes finding a source of clean water for their sheep they had to weather the storms and the elements. Not every time was it a beautiful, sunny day with the perfect amount of clouds. Sometimes they had to deal with rain. They had to deal with sandstorms. They had to deal with blistering heat. And it wasn't like they could just go home. They had to take care of their sheep and make sure that they would also be able to endure this weather. They had to fight off thieves. As we know, sheep and livestock were... A commodity they were used as currency in, in a lot of cultures so people who didn't have them wanted them so they were willing to come and try and steal a sheep or two from a flock hoping a shepherd wouldn't notice and if that happened a shepherd would have to fight off the thieves to protect the sheep and as we know throughout the Bible it makes so many mentions they had to fight off predators lions bears Whatever animal would see a sheep and go, I want to eat that, the shepherd would have to put themselves in between themselves of the sheep and that predator. Because sheep aren't very violent, they're not angry, they have no way of really defending themselves to other predators. They're just a perfect cut of meat covered in a pillow. So they're the perfect animals to go after. So a shepherd had to be trained to defend not only themselves, but their sheep. In that verse, it makes mention of the rod and the staff. And the idea and imagery of a shepherd's staff is widely known, but we often forget the, the rod aspect of it. And we're going to break these down really quickly and go over what they were used for and what they meant. A shepherd's staff, a unique instrument used, for, used totally for the care and management of sheep and only sheep. A symbol of concern and compassion a shepherd has for their sheep. So the shepherd's staff was used to guide, bring back, and it was used to care for their sheep. Sometimes we see in pictures and historical books and mostly movies that a shepherd's staff would have a hook on it so they could hook around the sheep and kind of drag them back. But a lot of them were just a straight pole of wood that uh, the shepherd had either whittled themselves or found or was given that would last them their, their long trips. And the rod that's mentioned here conveys the concept of authority, of power, of defense of the sheep, and for discipline. Usually it was a short club-like um, item, usually made of wood that was good for whacking, that they could whack predators or thieves on the nose to stop them from stealing the sheep or hurting the sheep. But it was also used for correcting the sheep. And it wasn't done the same way they would use to defend the sheep. But it was used for 
correcting. And they, well, the way they would do this was they would push it into the, the leg of the sheep. Not hard enough to uh, wound the sheep or hinder the sheep very much because they still had to move, but it left a lasting impression on the sheep. So the sheep would know, hey, if I'm always walking right, they would push it into their left side or their left leg and it would bring the sheep back into alignment and eventually the sheep would forget about any pain or what the shepherd did and they would just know that they were corrected and they were supposed to walk straight with their flock. Let's look at verses 5 and 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that just wonderful? The Lord is going to prepare a table in the midst of anything. He is going to protect us, even in the presence of our enemies, like a shepherd did. He took care of us, and he still does take care of us. He is walking beside us each and every day of our lives. There isn't a day where we are abandoned by our shepherd. There isn't a day we're forgotten by our shepherd. There isn't a day where the shepherd is tired of dealing with his sheep and just let them go. Because the shepherd, as we know, cares and has compassion for not just the flock. He does care for the flock, but he cares about each and every sheep as an individual. And I found out a very cool practice uh, for some shepherds. They would actually name their sheep and they would cut some of their wool to leave a pattern sometimes that they would be able to identify their sheep just by glancing at them and sometimes they would even call them by name and the sheep would respond so that relationship between the shepherd and the sheep wasn't just watching over sheep grazing on a grass but it was compa uh, compassionate and caring and protective and loving and guiding and it really paints this picture of God as a shepherd for us as we know that Christ has called the church to be in unity as the body of Christ and that we are his flock and Christ is the one leading and guiding us let's look at Ezekiel 34 verses 11 and 12 for this is what the sovereign Lord says I myself will search for my sheep and look after them as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. Christ looks for us. He keeps an eye out for us. We have this misconception that sheep are just usually either in a tight-knit group or they're in a pen and they are just not able to wander. But in that time, a shepherd would let their sheep wander sometimes even miles away from him and they would still keep tabs on each and every one of those sheep and it just paints this wonderful and loving picture of Christ as our shepherd calling us to be in community together as he watches over and as he guides us that we can find comfort and love in him and we can trust him to know that when he guides us and leads us and sometimes corrects us. He's doing it from a place of love. He's doing it from a place of greater understanding. It reminds us that the shepherd seeks out their sheep. If you've been in church for any amount of time, you probably have heard scripture or the phrase, uh, the lost sheep. And it's talking about when one sheep wanders off from the flock, the shepherd is aware of it and they go after that sheep. They will bring back their sheep to the flock, no matter how far they've wandered off, no matter how hurt they've made themselves, no matter how tangled they've gotten in, whether it be in, in thorns or roots or whatever bush they've got themselves stuck in, that the shepherd will bring back that lost sheep because it's an intentional relationship. It's a loving and caring relationship between us and Christ. Let's look at uh, the same chapter in Ezekiel 34, but let's jump down to verses 15 and 16. I myself will tend my sheep and, I, and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. Isn't that just so wonderful? I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock 
with justice. That line laid lie down in green pastures. I've heard it for so many years, but during my time of just studying and research for this sermon, I came across a different meaningful understanding of it. Some of us may not know, we might not be shepherds or understand the bio biology of sheep very well, but sheep, if they lay down incorrectly, let's say they lay down on their side for too long, the blood will leave their legs. Let's say they get trapped upside down, whatever the situation is, the blood leaves their legs and it actually goes back into their body and it can cause many different pains, it can cause discomfort, it can cause disease, it can even be fatal in some sorts if they're incorrectly lying down or stuck for too long. And what a shepherd does to correct this is they will pick them up and make them lie down correctly until the blood has returned properly into their legs and they understand the perfect amount of time to do so because if they don't if they pick up the sheep and just let them run free again, the sheep doesn't have any blood in their legs or they don't have enough blood in their legs. And what ends up happening is they stumble and they fall and they can break their leg. They can hurt themselves. They can hurt other sheep. So a shepherd understands that this laying down incorrectly, finding rest incorrectly can be fatal. But if they correct it and they help the sheep and they let them go too early, that can also be very dangerous. And I found this so interesting because how many times have we asked Christ to help us and guide us through something that could be potentially very dangerous to our health or our family or our faith, and then He helps us and we immediately want to run off and go start another season of our lives or start a new task, or we want to just get back to our regular lives. And sometimes we just need to be held by the shepherd and what they would do is they would bend down and they would hold the, the sheep against their leg so that the sheep wasn't able to get up. But they also weren't just pushed down and held. They were, they were held in a way that would comfort them. So the sheep, trusting the shepherd, would find comfort in the arms of the shepherd and trust that when the shepherd let them go was the appropriate time for them to run off. And sometimes that's how we have to be in line in our lives. Christ calls us from something. He helps us through a situation or a season, through our brokenness, through our mourning. And when He helps us, we immediately want to get back to our regular life. But He knows that if we rush into things, we get up too quickly, we run off, we stumble, we can have accidents, we could hinder other people. So He calls us to just wait. Is He calling you just to wait alongside Him today? Is He calling you to find comfort in Him today? Deuteronomy 4.29 says this, But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Today I don't know what your relationship with Jesus looks like. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but maybe you are so tired of not being in communication with your shepherd. Maybe you've never even known Jesus could be your shepherd and you're see you've been seeking guidance and comfort and love, true love and comfort during your life. And I want to just encourage you. It can be hard to take a step of faith. It can be hard to seek something with all your heart and your soul because we get so disappointed by the world that it becomes very hard to put our best effort forward. It becomes hard to be transparent and admit what we lack. But today, if you're here today and you have heard this message and you feel that there is a longing for Christ, I want to encourage you to take a step forward. And we're going to pray for you just in a moment. Matthew 7, 8 says this, For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This is a really powerful scripture. Because it doesn't just say for new Christians or mature Christians or those who are lost sheep. But it entails everybody. So if you are someone who has never experienced Christ before, never accepted Christ before, you can ask. If you are 
someone who's been a Christian their whole life and you want to experience Christ in a new way. You want to experience him and accept him as your shepherd. You want to be able to find comfort in his arms. You want to be able to trust him in all situations, even when you don't understand it. You can ask him. Maybe you were someone who grew up as a Christian and you left the church due to life or drama or pain and suffering. I don't know what your situation is. But maybe you're being called back to him today. Maybe you're feeling that you need your shepherd to seek you out and find you. Well, like the scripture says, all you have to do is ask. He never stopped looking for you and seeking you. But all you have to do is ask and you will receive your shepherd. To everyone watching here, I just want to ask, do you know your shepherd? Do you know Christ to be your shepherd? The one who has a compassionate and intimate relationship with you. The one who cares and comforts for you. The one who guides you and sometimes when need be, disciplines you. Do you see Christ as your shepherd? And if so, how often do you go to him as a shepherd? Like I said, we're going to take some time today to just pray for those who maybe have never accepted Christ before. And we're going to pray for those who maybe would call themselves lost sheep. Or maybe today have identified themselves. They never knew what they were, but they've realized, I'm a lost sheep. We're going to take some time today and we're going to pray together. And if you are someone accepting Christ, maybe for the first time, I want to just ask you, encourage you, ask Him into your life. Ask Him to be your Lord and Savior and your shepherd and just give over your life to Him one step at a time. And if you are someone who's gone away from the church, you've identified yourself as a lost sheep and you're saying, I need to come back to Christ. I need to come back to my shepherd and to my flock. I want to just ask you, just ask Him to seek you and just ask Him to be in your life once again. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful, God, that your word can teach us so many new things, Lord. Even after we look at this, this story, this imagery, this poem, Lord, that we can find new depth to it, Lord. So we thank you that you teach us that you're our shepherd, Lord, that we can have this relationship with you. We can have one where you're guiding us and you have an intimate knowledge of who we are and our struggles and our pains, Lord, even now, Lord, as we're online and the people are listening, God, you know what they're walking with. You know what the pain and suffering they're going through, what heartache they're going through, what mourning they may be going through, Lord, what attacks on their mental illness they may be trying to endure, Lord. And we just thank you that you walk with us and that you guide us, God, and that you not only guide us from pasture to pasture, but you will lie us down and give us rest and comfort us and love on us and then upon your timing your greater knowledge will send us back into our day-to-day -day, God so I just pray for all those who are accepting you Lord that they are just showered with your love and your grace Lord that they experience you for the first time and for those who stepped away from the church who have stepped away God who are being called back to you Lord let them know you in a new, intimate way, Lord. Let them be reignited for you, God, and that they can find comfort in whatever reason drew them away from you, Lord. They can trust in your hands, God. And I just hand you over all the glory and all the honor, Lord, as we just worship you, God. And we just thank you that you are never too far from us, that we can ask, Lord, that we can pray to you, God, and we can just trust in you Lord even when we don't understand the situation even when the environment seems scary we just thank you and we give you all the glory and honor Lord in your precious name we pray amen I just want to thank you for joining us here on Highway Online and I just want to take a moment to note if this is your first time just a reminder text the word welcome to the number here at our Highway 416-267-1189. But if you prayed that prayer of salvation 
for the first time, I want to encourage you, text us the word love, L-O-V-E, to the same number here at Highway. And if you are someone who maybe has stepped away from the church or from Christ, and now you're reunited and reunited with him, I want to encourage you to also text the word love to us, L-O-V-E, 416-267-1189. Here at Highway, we exist to introduce people to Christ, to share his word, but then we also exist to walk alongside them in their new spiritual journeys with God. So we want to know who you are. We want to know that you've accepted Christ. And we want to help you along these initial steps of your new walk with God. For everyone else, I want to just thank you for joining us. And I want to remind you, if you live in the Scarborough area, I want to encourage you to join us here in the building next Sunday so that we can just fellowship and worship and Spend some time face to face together. If not, that's perfectly okay because same place, same time, same platform, highway online, where we can just continue to work in this online community. And I want to say have a great week, have a blessed week, and remember, highway is a place to belong.